we are joined by two very, very important people to the Marvel fandom, Christopher Marcus, Stephen McFeely. Holy cow. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for having uh, me. How was your convention so far? How was your San Diego Comic-Con? Uh, it's frenzied. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we did Hall H, and we didn't think anyone would want to come to see yeah. a couple of old guys do uh, Hall H. What? what? But, uh, well, we know, it was also, we, we, Hall H, I think of as a place where you present new things. Yes. They've We're seen our movie. Things. We don't have another one. So I mean, they've seen it, but they're going to go see it again and again and again. So, and so. again. Bless, gotta, uh, bless them uh, for that. This is your victory yeah, bless lap. Bless us right now. Yeah. because exactly. we've also done the same thing. Oh, absolutely. Thing. <laughs> Watch it. So, uh, of course, in the aftermath of Marvel Studios Avengers Endgame, are you now just taking your victory lap? Or are you just guys just hanging out by the pool being like, man, we done and done? <laughs> I, I once a day wonder why I'm not doing that. <laughs> like, people are like, boy, you can write your own ticket. <laughs> It doesn't feel to like what? it. That's right. <laughs> um, no, we're working. We 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 helped form a studio with the Russo brothers, Dagbo, and so they uh, have expectations. <laughs> writing a couple projects for that, and uh, you know they're coming down here and shaking our asses. <laughs> Sets. <laughs> Assets. Well done. Well done. Language. Um, you do. yes. <laughs> One of, one of the great things I love about that, though, is like if you really do look at the track record or the work y'all have done together, it, it is con it is constant and it is big and it's it's visually gorgeous. I got to know, and we were kind of talking about this before mm. we went live, you got to disagree on things. What is what is the process of working together on such big and complex storylines? It. Um we certainly will agree, uh, disagree occasion, uh, occasionally, more than once. Uh, we've been at it long enough to know that it's it's getting easier to sort of put your argument down and try it one guy's way because if it works, it's going to work, and you're going to have a lot of chances to find that out. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, we'll circle back around. It's know? an incredibly long, drawn-out process. Yeah. Like if 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 we had to make something up and it would be I don't know on stage tomorrow, <laughs> we'd have to come to blows because it's, <laughs> yeah. an answer is needed. But this, yeah. these things take years. Like everything will be aired at some point. In my mind, I feel like there's just big webs of pictures and like yarn oh, yeah. in a room yeah. of yes. your house. We showed a little bit of that today at Hall H, but um, we couldn't show all of it because it's just so intricate and crazy and people yeah. will take photos of it. But We yeah. make good conspiracy theorists, yeah. <laughs> but I don't, I don't believe anything. So I'm, mm. yeah. Now we talk about the intricacy of, of your job and of course, uh, Avengers Endgame, the intricacy of all these characters is so incredible and in how you wove them all together. Was there a character, if you could, it's so many, is there one that you had a favorite that you were like, I love writing this character, I love writing this person's voice, I love developing and finding out how this mm. person becomes more three-dimensional. Well, we got a chance in those two movies to, to work with Thanos mm. uh, <laughs> and to yeah. really sort of try to, the goal was to try to make him Darth Vader for a new generation, like just really the, the go-to villain. And and uh, he's a philosopher in a way, right? He's a very sort of, uh, he's got a code, even though it's a twisted one. Mm -hmm. So the idea to work with him, work with a really smart character who is yeah. vicious, was great. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, you get two different uh, Thanos. Thanos. Yes, we do a little bit. Fan yeah. I. <laughs> fan I. I don't know. <laughs> you get yeah. like the older. Yeah, that. yeah, that was great. Right that you get yeah. the older, right. kind of more like tone. But I loved. Yeah. Uh, the younger, like more. Yes. Yeah, coming out of the thing, covered in blood, like warlord. Yeah, yeah. the warlord yeah. Thanos. Yeah. Right. Uh, so what was that like? Having to take the character and kind of like work backwards and yeah. find out what he was like when he was younger. He didn't have that philosophy. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, you know, we, there's you're haunted by like, a, did we make a more simplistic version in the second one? But, I, you know, he's he's the half you're not getting from the first one, so it, it all works together. But it also reminds you of how scary he is. Yeah. Because right. he doesn't have the glove at the end of this movie and you still have to be afraid of him. And when he walks in covered in blood, oh. you're like, oh, that's <laughs> not good. That's that dude. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and that's the great thing about it, right? Because you also get these opportunities to see these characters at different evolutions. Yep. But also, these are the characters we know and love from the comic books. You know, how often... Are, one, are your houses just full of single-issue comic books? And two, you know, how often do you kind of go back in the writing process and go, okay, this is the source material. Oh, sure. You yeah. know, how do we revitalize yeah. this? How do we modernize I didn't it? grow up with comics. Chris a little bit more than me, but even then, we weren't, um, you know, we, we, we weren't the biggest collectors on, on the planet. Uh, yes, my house now is filled with sort of collections and mm -hmm. statues and stuff, uh, but Kevin Feige is really adamant about making sure that even though we're 
maturing some of it or making it real, uh, we never lose the spirit of those early panels in those comics. So I remember very well, like he came to Atlanta one day and said, let's scrub through Starlin's work, right? What about this? Can we get Mephisto in here? And, yeah. and stuff like that led to Ebony Maw being a bit of a hype man, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. that's what Mephisto was doing in those comics, yeah. sort of singing Thanos' praises. And that was glorious. Big money yeah. to see. Right? That, that whole scene. Yeah, I would pay big money to see Ebony Maw see, yeah. behind Thanos <laughs> on stage <laughs> as his <laughs> hype man. A very nice, uh, tepid hype man. Everyone, right, raise everyone. to your feet. <laughs> Give it up for the man of the hour. <laughs> like, I see this be being nice. a wrestling match in your brain. Oh, absolutely. Everything's you a wrestling know? match in my mind. Um, <laughs> so one thing we talk about, um, the fans. Like, the fans love these characters. Yeah. When you, when you hear the fans' reactions and you hear the fans, what they want, how does that factor into your writing process in terms of what fans expect and kind of hold on to when they love these characters, like those core tenets? Well, I mean, you know, we will we'll see, obviously, things that are bubbling up online when we're writing it, but it's you would get blown by the wind every course, day if yeah, you right. responded to it. But, I mean, seeing the response to these things is, it, it's humbling because yeah. you remember like, oh my, you know, because it becomes necessarily a very grounded trying to get this person on this piece of paper across the piece of paper. <laughs> uh, and you forget that anybody's even gonna see it. You're just like, I just gotta do this and then I can eat a sandwich and it'll be great. <laughs> and then you hear people cheering or crying or people thanking you because they went with their kids and it brought yeah. them together and it's like, like, it's, it, it's really pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure y'all can write basically at this point a thesis on complicated story arcs on uh, multi-person mm. superhero teams because that that's the incredible thing about it is when you look at the movies, particularly Marvel Studios, Avengers yeah. Endgame, there are so many characters, so many big personalities, so many superpowers. Yeah. Um, how do you figure out how to do this placement? Because I know a lot of us, particularly in that the scene where they where she goes she's not alone uh, and like all the women yeah. come together like that moment was yeah. just so key and so pinnacle but it didn't seem like it was weird that this that this power came in like you had right. valkyrie go into the air like yeah. do what was like right. he valkyrie i'm going to go into the flames type <laughs> situation right, right. how do you keep those things Oh, it's I mean, great. <laughs> it, it's it's not easy, and I'll, you know, once it gets to actual fighting, there are you know extremely talented people who who can negotiate that better than we can. I mean, it always comes down to character for us. If we can come down, if we can come to a character reason why you can get those people together, um, that doesn't knock you out of the story. Um, then we'll do it and then you can figure out how the dynamic works there but there are times where I've forgotten what people can do <laughs> and you write a really good fight scene and then you remember like oh, oh they don't do that <laughs> right. no, or like oh he's, he could have just called down some lightning and that's right he probably could really finish that a lot yeah. more quickly <laughs> <laughs> it's and not, we're, like, ah. we're trying to find particularly in a movie with so many people N notes for each person, right? Like moments. It's yeah. not going to be the Mantis movie, but I, you can probably remember three or four good moments for Mantis in Infinity War, mm -hmm. right? So that's that's our challenge: is to give everyone their uh, their you know, moments. Fifteen minutes of fame. Yeah. 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 Well, you gentlemen have way more than fifteen minutes. You have a whole lifetime of fame, and I want to say, as two <laughs> fans, thank you for that incredible story and all the most all the ride you took us on. Uh, everyone, Chris, Steve, thank you for joining us.